Hi, I'm Bob Mulrooney, Extension Plant Pathologist at the University of Delaware. In the previous video, we learned how to take soil samples once the, the crop was out of the field in order to determine if nematodes are an issue in the field. We're trying to monitor population levels and that is best done in the fall. Today we're going to learn what to look for during the growing season when the crop is in the field and we see symptoms that we want to find out why are the plants not looking normal. Nematodes can be responsible for stunning of plants in the field, but stunting is not a diagnostic uh, feature that is only caused by nematodes. Other causes such as soil compaction, poor soil fertility, drought, and other issues can also produce stunting in the field. Once you've identified a problem area in the field like this one where you can see that the plants are stunted, one of the best things to do is actually to dig up some of these plants and take a look at their roots. With, with plants that look like this, you also have the possibility that this could be fertility problems. So it's always a good idea to take a soil fertility sample as well, sampling the good areas as well as the bad areas. And here, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll take a look and see what we have here. When digging up stunted plants, soybean plants in particular, it's very important that you don't disturb the root system. You want to dig them up carefully and shake and gently shake the soil from the roots. You don't want to pull them up out of the ground. One of the nematodes that we're more likely going to find is either soybean cyst nematode, root knot, or less commonly, lesion nematodes. Lesion nematodes can be a problem on corn or possibly potatoes. Once the plants are dug, what you're going to be looking for are stunted roots. If you see anything that's dead or, or dying, in the case of root knot nematodes, you might actually see galls on the roots, and we'll be talking about that later. The primary nematode that we do see is soybean cyst nematode, and they produce small white to yellow females on the roots if they're at the proper stage of development. These cysts are only 1 32nd of an inch, but they are visible to the naked eye. Remember that the extremely small white and yellow female cysts are considerably smaller than the normally occurring nitrogen fixing nodules that you'll see on healthy soybean roots. One of the other nematodes that we can easily identify by digging up the roots is root knot nematode. And they are very common here in Delaware in our processing vegetables and our vine crops, as well as corn and soybeans. And they can be seen easily by digging up the roots very carefully again Remember, it's important to make sure you keep the shovel away from the root zone so when you pick it up, you don't, when you pick up the plant and dig, you don't reduce, lose all the roots. If root knot nematode is the problem, we're going to see large swellings like we can see here on this particular root. You can see the large swellings that are present and the stunting that we're seeing here is a result of this very heavy infestation of root knot nematode. You can see how severely clubbed and stunted this root system is, particularly the primary root, as compared to what a, a rather normal root would look like on an uninfested plant. If we take some water and, and wash this off, I think you'll be able to see more clearly what we have here. Root knot can really vary in how much galling that we see. Sometimes the, the galls can be very small, like on the end of this root, to these very large knots that we see on the main root. And this is a, in relationship to the number of adult females that are present in the roots. This is very diagnostic. Nothing else looks like this, whether it's on baby lima bean or soybean or cantaloupes or cucumbers or any of the other susceptible crops that we grow here. If you dig up the plants and you don't find any symptoms on the roots, that doesn't mean that nematodes might not be involved. There's a number of nematodes that produce no symptoms on the roots that we can visibly see. To actually find out if nematodes are a problem, we're going to want to take a soil test from the plants that are stunted. And that's what we want to do here. What we would do is, just like we do with the survey samples, we would want to sample the soil right between the plants in the row, going down about four to six inches, removing a, a, a small amount of soil with the, with the spade or a soil probe. And you'd want to do that in, in 15 to 20 places in the area where you, you're seeing the stunting in the field. 
it's important to sample that area, that zone between where the plants are poorest and where they look normal. It's that zone between the two extremes that are going to have the most nematodes. Once we've taken the 15 to 20 samples from the area that we're sampling, we want to shake it up, mix up the soil really well, and then we want to take uh, a cup of soil. I use a, like to use an 8-ounce cup, and two of these will give us a pint, and that's what we like to have for a sample for testing in the, in the lab. Two of these is, will, be, will be plenty adequate. Remember, uh, we're putting them in a, in a Ziploc bag. We want to put them not in paper but in plastic so they don't dry out. And it's very important that the samples are not thrown up on the dashboard of a hot truck or vehicle where they'll dry out. Remember, they have living organisms in them and extreme heat will kill them if they're handled improperly. They can be refrigerated until they are sent to a a nematode diagnostic laboratory for identification and enumeration. When submitting samples to the laboratory for nematode detection, it's important to fill out the nematode assay information sheet that you can find available online or at one of the county extension offices. And this information was also available in the first video.